we are back and today we are going to discuss hydraulic actuators just the way we had pneumatic actuators we have hydraulic actuators the difference is that here we are not controlling the flow but we are trying to create a force and this force can be used for doing anything lifting a load moving something and so on and so forth so we see that when we use gas there is an upper limit for that force but once we change this gas by some oil then this force it automatically increases of course the design is such that we can handle greater forces because oils are incompressible much more incompressible as compared to what gases are so you have very large forces and that's what we are going to do in case of hydraulic actuators so what's the principle behind that the principle is that any change in pressure this is pascal's law any change in pressure in an enclosed fluid is transmitted undiminished throughout the fluid throughout the oil throughout whatsoever kind of hydraulic fluid which you are making use of and this hydraulic pressure is given by as you can see f1 upon a1 force upon area so to say and as such this this pressure where you see that this uh, pressure is taken in pascal force is taken in newton area is taken in meter square so f1 is the applied piston force a1 is the force forcing piston area the area of the piston is a and that's what we are going to exploit the the area the change in area is going to be used as a force multiplier that's what we're going to see in the next slide what we go in for that the pressure which we are going to apply is transferred equally throughout the liquid so the resulting force on the working piston is given by this is given by pressure into area but the thing is that this pressure ph it's same throughout <coughs> but this area a2 is much 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 larger if it is 10 times the force will get multiplied by 10 times if it is 100 times the force will also become 100 times this is the basic principle behind it as you can see in this figure if you want to just make it clear that we are applying force f1 over area a1 some pressure ph is generated the same pressure ph it gets transmitted undiminished and it acts on this piston but this piston has area a2 and the resulting force the resulting force fw is given by ph into a2 if you remember this ph was nothing but f1 upon a1 so once you put the value of ph as equal to f1 upon a1 you will get the value of fw in terms of f1 as fw is equal to a2 upon a1 and you see this a2 upon a1 is a very large ratio as such suppose suppose this is this is circular plate and this is also circular plate and this circular plate has a diameter which is 10 times the diameter of this as you can see in the figure over here and so the area of this will be 100 times the area of this so whatever force you apply over here it will get multiplied by 100 times a2 upon a1 is 100 times as compared to the applied force so the working force as such is 100 times as compared to the applied force it means that if you apply a force equal to 10 kg force you will get the output as 1000 kg force i mean simply applying force you can lift big things cars even trucks and so on and so forth by making use of these kind of hydraulic actuators this is the principle this is the hydraulic actuator principle which converts a small force f1 into an amplified force fw we shall be spending some time over here and in this slide as well as in the next slide we will be very very carefully observe we will be carefully observing the fluid flow so give special attention to the arrow marks what we are making use of here is a linear motor 
that's the way you have induction motor which moves the motor in a circular manner this linear motor it it moves the the piston this actuator in linear manner it can move to right it can move to left so this is a linear motor but what is to be observed very very carefully is that you have this entire servo wall this servo wall as you can see from here has one two three and four topmost valve or holes or openings and two the bottom holes or openings over here so these are the top openings and these are the bottom openings so you can call this as opening number one opening number two opening number three and opening number four right the bottom openings are always open they will not close either way irrespective of the fact where this servo valve is located but right now this is the position of the servo valve the top openings the first opening is open second is closed third is open fourth is closed so you can see that the first and the third are open and second and fourth are closed just remember the odd openings first and third are opening are opens and the fourth and the second and the fourth this is the second opening this is the fourth opening these are blocked these are closed even is closed this is the current situation and in this current situation what is happening you have some fluid which is coming from the pump and this fluid is flowing it is going to this point why it is not going down because this this is closed over here that's why it has a kind of path which is available it's going to move here and from here it is going to go down and this this is always open and it's going to go in this direction and it's going to push this hydraulic piston from left to right in this direction from left to right right it's going to push it in this way now what we are going to do it's going to push it's it's pushing it right now and as it's pushing it the the fluid over here it gets compressed but it finds it way from here to here to here to here and ultimately it go back it, it's going back to the fluid reservoir so this is what the things are that's how the things are going to move and you can see that this area is very large and so it's going to push this piston with great amount of force in, in in this direction it's going to move in this direction and moving in this direction there's a position transducer which is continuously continuously comparing its position with the set point the moment this becomes equal then it gives a signal and the pump turns off pump simply turns off and suppose you want to reverse the direction suppose you want to move it in, in in this direction from from right to left over here like this in that case what you will do as you will see in the next uh, diagram over here this linear motor will move towards right as this movement of the, mo the motor the, the, the linear motor is going to move from left to right the linear motor is going to move from left to right then in that case with this left to right motion you will see that this portion is going to occupy this position and it's going to block this opening but as this servo valve it moves from left to right it moves in this direction this wall will open this valve this opening the top opening will close and this opening will open then what will happen to the direction that's going to be see in the next uh, diagram over here uh, in, in the next slide but what we see is that 
this linear motor is going to move slightly towards the right from left to right and this first opening will be closed second will be open third will be closed and fourth will be open in that case you will see that the odd openings first and third will be closed and in that case the fourth and fifth opening they will get opened and it will have some reversal of the the fluid motion that's what we're going to see in in the next slide i think so far it's all clear there should not be any doubt at this position let's move to the next slide now when this valve has moved from left to right as i said it has moved on this direction so this opening is now closed this is open this is closed this is open so whatever was coming from pump it was moving in this direction now now it's going to move in this direction and it's going to go like this and go like this and it's going to push this hydraulic piston towards right you see the direction of this has changed now it's now moving in this direction it's moving out and out and whatsoever is the fluid which is over here it gets compressed and it finds its release through this direction through this direction now you know this point which was earlier connected to this position is now connected to this position and therefore it goes back to the fluid reservoir because we are making use of an hydraulic fluid some kind of hydraulic fluid we don't want to waste it we have to get it back to the fluid reservoir so ultimately this thing is going to move more and more towards right more and more towards left from right to left and this position transducer is going to see the moment it reaches the set point this controller it gives a signal to to the pump to turn it off it will stay over there otherwise in case you want to reverse it again you want to turn it back to its position then again this controller is going to give indication to the linear motor and the linear motor will move slightly towards left and then again this valve will open and this valve will close and again in that case the hydraulic piston will start moving towards right i think you all are very now very well aware of you are seeing the motion of the fluid that's how great amount of force is generated you can position you can position this hydraulic piston anywhere towards left towards right and anything which is connected on this end or anything which is connected on this end or even on both the ends it can be displaced either to left or to right exactly to the point where you feel like by help of the controller which is going to turn the pump on or turn the pump off as the case may be and move this servo wall in any direction to to uh, change the direction of flow of fluid either to move it in this direction or to move it in this direction as we had seen in the previous slide so my dear friends this is the way we are making use of hydraulic actuators it can actually lift great amount of weight in any direction it can be used for crushing the things lifting the things compressing the things and so on and so forth so this is the principle of hydraulic actuator which is acting as a servo servo means it's having it, it's getting a set point and it's exactly bringing it back to the point the the hydraulic piston is brought exactly to the point which matches with the set point with great great force i think now the the basic principle the funda of working of hydraulic actuators is absolutely clear to you you still have some doubts you have some queries you want to share something with me you can always contact me through whatsapp or lms or zoom sessions or telephones or whatsoever way face to face etc etc uh, as per your convenience as per the uh, situation which is available the resources which are available i thank you for being with me once again and i wish you a very safe stay and enjoy learning bye bye